Working in perfect harmony and a smooth rhythm, that comes from long hours working closely together to build desperately needed infrastructure. It is back-breaking work for the 400 United Kingdom engineers and medics who have traveled a long way from home to serve with the United Nations mission in war-torn South Sudan, toiling away in scorching 38-degree heat, ankle-deep in mud as they build new roads, helicopter landing pads and accommodation units. So we've come over here as uh, really one big team from the UK and the most important uh, thing that I'm charged with is um, finding our place in the much bigger team that is unmissed. Leading the contingent is Lieutenant Colonel Katie Hislop, the first female commander to serve with the mission. Coming from the UK, um, there are quite a few uh, female commanding officers, so it wasn't something that I thought about as, as being different really until I arrived. Um, what I've also noticed is that there are actually very few female peacekeepers over here, and I know that it's really important that we have a huge diversity across um, all of our peacekeepers to fully understand the situation and to be able to um, add sort of what, what we can uh, in terms of value. The UK contingent brings huge value to the mission itself by building desperately needed infrastructure, enabling the peacekeepers to do their work in a country devastated by ongoing violence. The contingent is mostly based at two locations, Bentiu and Malakal, in the north of the country. One of the challenges here that we're enjoying is that we are building these accommodation blocks out of um, reused material, out of recycled material, um, and therefore we are having to use quite a lot of innovation uh, to put them together. But the great thing about that is it's really efficient and it's an efficient use of resources um, where it's very difficult to get resources to because the roads are in a very poor state uh, and there are very few uh, aeroplanes to bring those, uh, those in. In Bentiu, they're designing and building a new hospital so their 80-strong team of medics can care for unmissed personnel across the region. While the primary focus is on enabling the UN mission to function, the UK contingent is also working on projects that directly benefit local communities. First in Malakal, we've been asked to repair a culvert uh, in the town uh, and that is critical to allowing the local population to move down a particular road. So we're seeking to do that uh, fairly soon. It will take a small uh, team of engineers um, working together with um, the local council uh, to make sure that we produce something that is suitable for the local population. In Bentiu, they are training local doctors, nurses and health workers. With those skills, what we're hoping is that this increases the confidence of the local population in the Benchu State Hospital so that people feel more confident in moving from the POC site, potentially back to Rubcona or Benchu and the communities there. Okay. The local community is grateful for the contribution made by the UK troops. <laughs> The experience is also life-changing for the troops. Right down at the most junior soldier level, our soldiers have interacted with other soldiers from around the world who don't even speak the same language. They've done it through the language of engineer work together, a sort of military feeling of being part of the same team uh, and of um, in, enjoying sort of sports matches together on the weekend and in their, their downtime. And I think that's been really, really rewarding. The real reward will be leaving a legacy of having made a real difference to the lives of the South Sudanese people. If I could genuinely leave any gift whatsoever, um, then I think I would want to leave uh, self-belief that the situation could get better. Um, but if you're asking me to leave something that I could actually leave, something physical and tangible from the engineers that we have here, then it would just be a slight improvement to the infrastructure, making their roads more trafficable, making them safer, and making people more secure, and certainly feel more secure uh, in the POC camps. Because it is quite frankly a beautiful country um, which should have a bright future and whatever we can do, whether it be small, 
um, just a small step, um, then we would uh, you know, take real privilege from, uh, from doing that. The privilege of serving the United Nations, the people of South Sudan, and making their country proud.